Hello humans and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to talk about maintaining skills and I'm also going to show you if I still have my one arm chin up. Now I want to thank Aaron Griffiths for the idea for this video. So thank you. I think this is a great topic that a lot of people can benefit from. I'm going to talk about uh, maintaining skills in general. These areas might apply to you, they might not, but I think it can be helpful for a lot of people to know when should you start to maintain and how. I'm going to start by talking about the difficulty with maintaining skills on the mind. Um, I think when we spend so much time developing a skill, many, many years or many, many months, it can be very scary to think that we're going to lose that skill. I used to feel this way as well, but I think that we should place more importance not on the goal, but on the process itself. And the process is something that we can never lose. We could lose that end goal, but we can never lose the fact that we went through a process, we stuck with it, we researched, we practiced hard, and maybe we did or we didn't reach the goal in the end, and maybe we did or we didn't maintain that skill in the end. Going through the process of sticking with something and understanding it and, and really practicing it is the biggest benefit from gaining anything. The other thing to keep in mind is, at least in my experience, if you do lose a skill down the road, uh, it is much easier to rebuild that skill when you had it in the first place. And if you went through a process of developing it, you know exactly how to develop it for yourself. So going through that process again, at least in my experience, was not only easier but much quicker to regain any lost skill, strength, mobility, whatever it was. It's important to note that when you're researching and, and kind of working on this maintenance skill, you might lose a skill and that's okay. You'll never lose that process of going through the skill. Now the question comes up, when should I start maintaining a skill or a strength or something like that? I think this is the biggest misconception and misunderstanding with maintaining skills. And I think that a lot of people end up maintaining skills too quickly. So let's say you just got your first rep of the stolder and it's still quite ugly, but it's a, it's a good first rep. Um, and you build it up for another six weeks and you can do multiple single reps of the stolder. And then you say, okay, this is good. I'm going to maintain this. Well, this single rep of a somewhat consistent stolder is going to be extremely difficult to maintain when you compare that to if you built it up to five reps for sets. Now, maintaining 80%, 70% of that is going to be quite easy. Um, easy. It's going to be depend particularly on the person. But the, the first thing that I recommend is actually building a skill to a high level. So most of the time that means three reps, four reps, five reps or more, or a certain amount of time in the position. Another example would be a one-arm handstand. If you can do a straddle one-arm handstand for 10 to 20 seconds, three out of 10 attempts, that's going to be very difficult to maintain that skill when you compare that to somebody that has a 10 to 20 second one-arm handstand, but the consistency is eight out of 10 or seven out of 10, much higher consistency rate, you're gonna be able to maintain that one-arm handstand much better. And this is, the, this is the main thing that I see with people with the one-arm handstand in general. They didn't build the one-arm handstand up to a high level. So when they try to maintain it, it's just impossible. They can't decrease the amount of sessions or the amount of time because they simply haven't built it up enough. And that goes for skills as well, handstand push-up or planche. Maybe you just didn't build it up high enough to be able to maintain whatever level that you want to maintain. The other thing to think about is not just in terms of volume of, of reps and sets, but also on the quality. So when we're first learning a, a strength skill or move or anything, it often looks quite ugly. And how do we define ugly? Usually ugly is lack of control of the body in the movement. So I'm going to show you a video of my first hollow back handstand pushup. You can see I did it. I controlled the eccentric, but on the concentric, everything is wavy. I have no control there. If I stopped there and tried to maintain that skill there, it would be incredibly difficult for me to do that because I don't have control over the full movement. Not only did I not build it up in volume, but the quality was not there. So after I built it up in quality and volume, then I started to maintain it. So think about these two as well when you're thinking about maintaining certain skills or strength or mobility or whatever it is. Now let's say you built up your element, whatever, to a good volume and good quality. Now, do you want to maintain it? Well, that's up to you. Do you want to explore different disciplines that you need to do? Um, this is all to be considered by you. If you are ready to maintain a skill, the next thing I would say to look for is what are you practicing in your practice now? So for example, I had a period where I was doing a lot of locomotion, two hours a day, six days a week. And I found that because I was doing so much locomotion, locomotion in, uh, includes a lot of bent arm, and, bent arm and straight arm pressing, I found that I didn't have to maintain my bent arm or straight arm pressing at all. Handstand push-up stolder actually got a little bit better from all of that work in locomotion but my pooling suffered. So I had to spend more time on my pooling. 
So look into what you're working on. If you're a rock climber, maybe you're pulling is excellent now, but your pushing is now suffering, then you need to spend time there. Or maybe you're a jiu-jitsu practitioner and your compression of the body, of the lower body, is very good and your, your mobility of the hips is very good, but maybe you're suffering in, in some other area that you need to spend more time. So look into your practice. What does your current practice really work on? And maybe you can take focus away from those developing those elements and go into the opposite direction. So after you figure this out, you know that you've built up your, your skill to a good volume, good quality, and now you know where you need to spend your time uh, depending on what you're working on. Now it's time to know how much you should actually work. So this is going to depend on how you built the skill at the time. So for example, my one-arm handstand, I needed to train six days a week, two to three hours per day, and sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less, but it was about that. Um, if I dropped down to once per week, and I did do that, I almost lost my one-arm handstand because I went from six days of training to only one, and that was too big of a, of a gap for me for that particular skill. So I found really good results from bringing six days a week down to four, and then from four down to two, and then from two down to one, and then continuing to go down. So start a bit higher, lower than you normally built it, and then see what happens. If you're dropping the volume, the total number of days, and you're still getting progress, then, oh my gosh, okay, I can put it down again. Or if you're dropping the days and you're not losing progress, not gaining prog progress, okay, maybe I can drop it again, see what happens, drop it again, drop it again. And you might lose skill and you will definitely lose some sort of quality. So for me, I, I lose reps in certain amounts, but I try to keep around 80% of what I did, 70 to 80%. So if I built something up to five reps, I want to see three or four reps I can still maintain. And if I can't, uh, it's not a big deal actually, but I could go back and do more volume or rework a skill or, or something like that. That's a good idea. That's a good thing to think about. If you're someone that has a movement perspective and you really want to dive into other subjects, this concept of maintaining certain things is definitely going to come up. So understanding where to start and how to build up is really important. Now the last thing I want to say is there are some skills that I need very little time to actually go into and maybe zero time. For me, this is, for example, the two-arm handstand. Because I'm maintaining the one-arm handstand, that naturally maintains my two-arm handstand. And I find I don't have to do work there at all. The other area is on certain ring strengths. So I can still do ring routines, forward rolls, shoulder stands, backward rolls, presses to shoulder stand, um, a front lever, back lever, 360, without working them. Uh, and they stay about the same. So you'll have certain elements that are very easy for you to maintain and certain elements that are very hard. It's going to be individual to you, what you're working on, your, your body type, how, how deep you dived into that practice. Um, and, and you'll find some easier, some harder, and you'll have to spend more time here, less time there. For me, for example, the ring work, I probably have gone multiple, maybe not multiple years, but maybe a, a full year without even getting on the ring and doing anything to do with four rolls, muscle ups or anything. And I tested this uh, last year where I did nine forward rolls in a row. And I think the last time I did a forward roll had to be at least a year prior to that, if not longer. So there are some skills where you don't need to touch it uh, very often at all. And it's still there to, to a relatively high, high degree. So now the question is, can I still do a one arm chin up? Now, previously I built my left arm up to very consistent reps, but my right arm, I think I only got a full rep one time. So I'm not expecting either on either side to achieve the one-arm chin-up. My one-arm chin-up negative is quite strong on both sides. I can control the full eccentric and it feels like I can hang out in the eccentric for as long as I want. I can I can tell you were nervous. <laughs> now obviously I surprised myself. I did not think I was gonna do one arm chin up on either side, but the left side felt very easy. So if I wanted to, I could revisit this pattern, which I am doing right now, and seeing if I can build it up to more consistency. Um, I'm going to continue to challenge myself and see, but yeah, not bad. 
I hope this concept of maintaining skills helped you and you can kind of go into the research and see did any of mine, my ideas work for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I love to hear from you guys. Thank you again, Aaron, for the video suggestion. I will see you all in the next video. That's the session.